am so looking forward to recording today. So, if you have followed me for a long time now, you know I've already done a review for The Last Airbender film. And I figured if I was angry at something, I would have hot sauce instead of alcohol. My doctor now recommends I do not consume that much hot sauce anymore. Oh, this was a bad idea! I thought I was done talking about this film. That was like, that video was like my last straw. The last time I'll ever talk about it. But wonderful news is circulating around the internet of another live action adaptation of my favorite TV show of all time. And I feel like I gotta come in again as the voice of reason. Now drunk and new and improved. So the drink of the choice today is an Irish car bomb. I hate Guinness and I hate Jameson. And I hate this film. Let's fucking talk about the movie, bitches! Oh my god, this sucks. Oh. Okay, so there's a normal sense of how angry you should be at a certain media. And then there's my level of anger that I have for this film. To put things in perspective, when someone has a question related to the Avatar universe, they come to me. I am the highest consumer of Avatar content. I have seen Aang and Korra probably at least 50 times over. I have the entire Avatar collection on DVD. I have the entire collection so far of every Avatar comic. I have consumed so much fan fiction and fan art of this entire series. I spent four years of my life studying two of the four elements. I know airbending and waterbending, Baguazhan and Tai Chi. I've traveled to China solely for the reason to take photos to be like, I see where they got the inspiration to make Avatar here. I've been on forums and Skype calls and many various conversations having several different arguments about the Avatar franchise. Don't you dare tell me that I am not an Avatar fan. My own Avatar is an Avatar reference. So when this movie decided to show its face, <laughs> oh, my god. You can complain about your source material being ill-represented in your this the current remake. You can like ban banter me and give make a good argument about how your soul was crushed because of a live-action remake, but you are never ever going to be close to feeling the amount of pain that the last airbender film did to people in 2010. No, I don't want to talk about I don't want to sit here for 12 to 15 minutes talking about why the film is bad. There are, we all no, why? There's a reason why, for the longest time in the Avatar franchise, we never talk about the film. We all know why it's banished in the banishment corner. We all know how fucking terrible it is. So I'm not gonna give you a breakdown. I'm just gonna tell you the process of how this abomination was made, how much money was made off of this, and how much money was spent. And most importantly, oh, I wanna rip M. Night Shyamalan, a new asshole. Now you're thinking, whoa, 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 Brooke, that's really harsh. I may be cute. I may be funny. I may, you know, be drunk and just appear like this happy person. But someone needs to be told a lesson. So now that you know the dark side that is babbling Brooke, let's finally get into a drunk cosmic review for this abomination of a film. Now let's talk about you, M. Night Shyamalan, the main perpetrator of this film. So let's start with the beginning. The entire idea of doing a live action adaptation of this beloved cartoon show was done because M. Night Shyamalan saw that his daughter dressed up as Katara for Halloween. Oh, isn't that so cute? She really loves this show. Let's make a live action adaptation of it! So I hope your daughter's very proud of you for taking one of the most beloved cartoons in American history 
and just shitting on the entirety of it. Your daughter, I bet she is very proud. <laughs> you laugh, I'll teach you to laugh at something that's funny. There's, there comes a point where you should listen to people that you're doing something incorrect. But no, M. Night, this motherfucker, I want you to really look hard at his directing AMDB. Look at all of these titles and look at how much he's done. Now take a look at his writing credits. Now take a look at his acting credits. Now take a look at his producing credits. Does something seem to be reoccurring here? Are you noticing a trend? I, I, I hate to call back to Star Wars, but there are some people you need to have surrounding you to tell you no. No, God! I'm gonna tell you right here and now, hire someone that's gonna be on your shoulder telling you no. No! In fact, there should have been someone on your shoulder telling you no for this whole film! In fact, actually, I want to point something out. <laughs> in his acting credits, apparently he plays a firebender in the earthbending prison. And I'm, I'm, I'm just curious, let's play the clip. Let's play the clip that has been mean to hell and see if we can play the fun game of let's find M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, is it this guy? No, no, no. It might not be this guy. No, not, not this guy either. Oh, this guy's looking pretty. Uh, no, I don't see him his face. I don't know. Is he a firebender? Maybe, I don't know. Fire Oh, maybe it's this dude. This dude. This dude with the sword. It's this guy. This guy. This guy with the sword. Oh, that's so M. Night. Oh my god, look at the face that has destroyed the entirety of this film! Look at this guy! Look at this guy! Now, let's talk about money. Because that's the only reason that M. Night Shyamalan made this film. He did it with the purest of tensions to make something great for his daughter. But in all honesty, when you comb through it, he was doing this for money, guys. So this movie had a budget of $150 million back in 2010. That is a lot of money. To put things in perspective, Dragon Ball Z Evolution's budget was $30 million. What? You know what's the deciding factor that this film was solely made for money, just to kind of prove my point here that live-action remakes are only used for money and publicity, you know, stunts. Back in 2010, what was the number one film that was going around that nobody would shut up about that unfortunately they had to take out the tagline for their first film? Oh! Oh, one of the most highest grossing films of all time of its age! Oh! A wonderful CGI 3D spectacular film that made a shit ton of money? So around the Avatar boom, a lot of films in the span of a couple of weeks took all of their films and said, let's convert them to 3D. It happened with Clash of the Titans. It happened with Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows. It happened with this fucking film. It happened every single film that was coming out that year in 2010 decided we need to convert our films to 3D because Avatar obviously made 3D great again. Take for example, Clash of the Titans. They spent five million dollars and spent seven weeks converting a film that was already done to make it 3D only because Avatar was 3D and making billions. That If that's not a ploy just to market off of the 3D like jerk fest, I don't know what is. And of course, of course M. Night took the brilliant idea of cramming a 3D conversion of Avatar <laughs> In the span of one month, he gave the people one month to convert the entire film into 3D. Just so we can have the tagline of a 3D movie and hopefully it would make him more money. And the sad fucking truth about this, it did work. This movie grossed 320 million dollars. That is double the budget of what was spent on this film. 320 million dollars 
worth of money. Everyone had to see 3D conversion films, so let's watch The Last Airbender. Let's watch all these great martial artists and bending and elements float around the screen in 3D. Ha <laughs> ha, this is spectacular. We're part of the problem. I hate that this film made back the money that it spent in double. Because you know, this film would have tanked if it didn't ride on the coattails of the, uh, the Avatar 3D conversion movement. It would have tanked hard. M. Night decided to capitalize on someone else's unique original idea because he knew, oh, I know you know, M. Night, your film you knew was gonna fucking tank. I'm actually, sh my hands are actually, my hands are actually trembling right now. That's how angry I am. I'm, I'm just not gonna yell because I know my uh, roommate upstairs is gonna be like, what's, go what's going on, Berk? Are you okay? Like, I'm gonna be like, no, I'm not okay because Hollywood's a piece of shit and M. Night Shyamalan needs to go die a ho horrible, fiery death because, oh my God. I have hope I proved my point. That you take a beloved TV show and made it the most capitalistic idea possible. That when I say that this is the worst adaptation of all time, I fucking mean it. I think this interview with the co-creators of the TV show best sum up how uncomfortable this is. Just look at their faces. They've seen the script. They've seen some test shots of what you've done. And they're just thinking, my God, we gave up our baby to this stranger? I will move on and I guess conclude with only, with one thing that is good about this film. Cause I feel like it's only fair that I talk about one good thing about this film. The actress that they casted to be Princess Yue, who honestly is probably the only actor who knows what she's fucking doing. She moves on to voice Asami Sato in Legend of Korra. <laughs> so they found this great actress to play Princess Yue. They're like, fuck, we should keep her maybe. And so yeah, the, the, the Yue is, a, is Asami Sato. Like, listen to this. I believe that my life force will leave my body and return to the moon spirit. You don't need to apologize for anything. I'm just so happy you're here now. If it wasn't for this film, we wouldn't have gotten my waifu. Make up be lucky you mean it. So, to kind of conclude all of this, come to me for any Avatar advice. If you need me, come reach me. I am the Avatar guru. I am the wise old sage that is of this franchise. And if you dare challenge my power, I will do to you what Stephen Colbert does when people challenge his knowledge of the Tolkien verse. I will school you, cause you've come into my house. You come into my house. You come into my house. How dare you? So, you can come to me if you want, M Night. I'm calling you out. This whole review, I am seriously being an- I, I, I apologize for what I'm about to do, but I am so far gone. I have embraced the Irish car bomb. I'm gonna call a fight. M. Night Shyamalan, you're a dickwad. I'm gonna fight you. I'm gonna fight you real hard. Cause you came into my house, motherfucker. You thought you could get away with, you know, fucking up my franchise and getting away with basically half of what you did for the box office scores on that one. $350 million in box office just so you could please your daughter. <laughs> I'm gonna... I'm gonna find you, you motherfucker. I'm gonna fucking kill you. I'm gonna fucking kill you! Oh, God. Irish car bomb done and aside. If you like this review, please follow me on my Patreon. Be a Patreon supporter, why don't you? So I can do more drunk cosplay reviews because honestly, 
Jameson ain't cheap. <laughs> Wanna say a big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. I love you mwah, dearly. If you become a Patreon today, you can be part of the Discord server so you can vote on the next Drunk Cosby review. No, oh, I kind of the Irish guy, Rob. I, 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 this is this is probably one of the most drunkest points I've ever been in a drunk review, and I've thrown up multiple times during drunk reviews. 